Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'm here with another savvy tip, which involves process control and how to stop, end, or kill a process activity on Linux. There's really two methods here that I'm going to walk through. One being a graphical method using a system monitor, much like what you would find in Windows called Task Manager, and the second being the terminal method, which should be a cross-distribution method and work for most distributions. The first thing we'll do is check out the system monitor. So let's go ahead and launch it. So I'm just gonna go and search for it. If we type in system monitor, we should find it. And here it is. Using system monitor, you can check out that the processes that are currently running in this tab. In the resources tab, you can see the resources that are being currently used up by the system. And finally, in the file systems, you can see the storage being used up by the various file systems. And the one that we're interested in today is the tab that's actually automatically loaded up by default, which is processes. Here you can see a list of resources running in the background. And you get a little bit of information here on what user is currently running the process, how much CPU or memory usage you have being used up by a process, as well as the current priority of the process. If you're new and stopping by to watch a tip today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more tips. Now these columns here aren't everything that's available to you. You can actually add more columns by clicking the three bars over here on the right hand side and going down to preferences. In preferences, we can see that we have more information fields available to us that aren't currently checked. So we have status, virtual memory being used, shared memory if we want, CPU, meaning how much time has the process been using the CPU, a nice number, as well as how the process is getting executed if that's something that you wanna look at. There's a few other things available to us here, but you can adjust these based on whatever you like. One other important thing is the update interval in seconds. So currently the processes list is getting updated every three seconds. So we can actually shorten this up and in order to save it, we can just exit out. All right, let's take a look at the differences between stopping, killing, ending, and continuing a process. We'll go ahead and use Como Rebi for the process. A search box will automatically pop up, but you can also click the magnifying glass over here on the right hand side in order to get the search box. But anyways, the Komarebi application that we're looking at here is a process that runs my live wallpaper in the background, as you can see it running here. So what we'll first do is let's go ahead and right click on the process itself and let's go ahead and try stop. You can see that you can also hit control and S in order to do the same function but I'm just gonna click on it. And here you can see that you're being warned that you're about to stop Como Rebi. So you can hit the red button, which is stop process. But it does warn you that this can cause problems if you just go ahead and stop a process in the middle of what it's doing or kill a process. Of course, be sure that you're not killing some type of process that's extremely necessary to the system because that can cause damage. But since I know Como Rebi isn't gonna really cause any issues, I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop process. So what does stop process do? Well, as you can see in the background, all that happened is Como Rebi kind of paused as my wallpaper paused here in the background. It's not moving around anymore. So let's go ahead and select continue in order to go ahead and continue running the application. So if we right click control C or just hit the continue option, I believe Como Rebi should go ahead, continue on its way. As you can see in the background, it is continuing. So those are your first two options, but this doesn't really help if a process has already gone rogue and you really have no other choice besides trying to end it or kill it. So let's first try ending it to see what happens there. All end means is that the system will try to gracefully end the program without completely killing off the process, which can cause issues. So if you hit end, of course you get the same warning. And now when you hit end process, you'll see that Como Rebi has completely exited in the background. Again, this is if it can gracefully end the program. If not, you need to take more drastic measures and kill the program, much like you would in Windows. So let me start Como Rebi right back up. And you can see it's back up in the background as well as in the process monitor. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. All right, and the last thing we wanna talk about if everything else fails, you can right click on a process and choose to kill it. Of course, this should always be a last resort because it can mess things up if you kill the wrong process. So always make sure that you're selecting the proper process and you're absolutely sure you have no other measure to do besides kill it or of course restart your computer. So if you kill the process, you of course will be warned again. But one thing to mention is we're not currently being asked for a password in order to kill the process. 
This is because it's owned by the current user that I'm using, so you can see here that the user is Savvy Nick, and that's the user I'm currently logged in with. If I was logged in with the root user, which we'll check out in a moment here, you'll have to give administrative privileges in order to kill the process. If we kill the process, we should expect much of the same result as end, but this time we don't care if it's gracefully ended, we're just going to end it right away without any regard for the program. And here in the background, you can see that Como Rebi was turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it one more time. And as you can tell, it's back up. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back to all the processes. So I'm going to clear the search and let's look for one that's owned by the root user, which we could potentially kill. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one. We can see that crypt D has very high priority. So this is probably a very important process here. What I'm gonna do is try killing this process. And as you can see, are you sure you want to kill the selected crypt D process, which is owned by the root user? If I hit kill process, now I'm warned one last time, hey, you need administrative privileges in order to kill this because you're currently logged in with a normal user. Well, I'm not going to go ahead and kill this process because I don't know what exactly is going to happen if I do kill that process. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel but I wanted to show you that a normal user cannot just kill processes without logging into a super privileged user. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out. Nothing got stopped or killed there. And this is a great thing to know about if you're new to Linux. Sometimes processes just start using too much memory or CPU out of nowhere because they've gone rogue. We've all been there in the past where we've had to end a program and it's a great method to know, especially if you're coming from Windows. So with the second method, let's go ahead and launch a terminal and go ahead and look at how to end or kill a process from there. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and just start up a new terminal. I'll make this a little bigger so we can see it. So really all that graphical system monitor was doing is issuing the same commands on a specific process ID that it looked up in the background. So you'll really be getting the same result, but instead we're using terminal to do it. First, we have to look up what process ID we want to end. So one way of doing that is using top and pressing enter. This is a terminal method in order to see the various different processes running in the background. As you can see up here, Como Rebi is the first process I can see and it has a PID or a process ID of 6275. So that's really what I wanna take note of. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here by doing control C. And in order to go ahead and kill that process now, I can simply do kill and then type in the process ID, which was 6275. Of course, check and double check that you have the right process ID. If you don't, you're gonna go ahead and inadvertently kill some other process, which might cause problems to the system or might even cause the system to be unusable. So let's go ahead and press enter. As you can see in the background, the live wallpaper stopped working again. So this command successfully worked and it's really just that easy. I'll start Coma Rebi up one more time here in the background and let's look at a different way to find that process ID. So instead of using top and searching through to find a process ID, you can see Coma Rebi now has a new one, 7321 you can use a different method, and that method is PS space AX, and that will also spit out a list of processes being currently used and their IDs. Now it won't be updating every few seconds. Instead, it starts with the very first process that's running and works its way down. It also only specifies where the process was started from and the current runtime. So you can see system applications come already is where the program was started from and the process ID is 7321. But an easier way, if you know the process name that you're looking for, is to go ahead and pipe this to grep and then just search for the application. So I know mine's called Como Rebi and I can see here that we have 7321 process and it's called Como Rebi. That's the one I wanna end. All right, and since we found it, we can go ahead and do kill 7321 again and we're sure that's Como Rebi so I'm going to press enter and in the background we went ahead and killed the program once more. Sometimes the terminal method is just bulletproof. You can launch a terminal really quick through a shortcut and just type in kill with a process ID if you look it up. So it's a nice method to know. Well I hope you enjoyed this savvy tip about how to manage a process activity on Linux. Let me know if you have any questions comments or suggestions in the comments section below. If you found this useful, please take a moment to share with someone who you might think would benefit from learning about this savvy tip. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.